What's that? Oh, it's a little baby deer. What's <laughs> that? Bro, where are we going? <laughs> Dude, I don't know right now. I mean, all we know is that this location <laughs> is seriously no joke. <sighs> We're at one of the world's most renowned UFO sighting spot right now, and we're just trying to find somewhere to park up and walk into the thick of it. Now, I didn't realize, I thought this was just like a UFO sighting, that was that, but no, allegedly there was two incidents in literally two days where another UFO was seen, and there was three entities that got out of the thing. The and then where we're going, bro, we have to go past where the three entities basically got out. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, what a way to just enter this video tonight. Tonight's oh. video, we're walking through an alien infested area. Do you know what I mean? It sounds like some of a horror film, right? Oh, that is uh, Rendlesham Forest. Yeah. It appeared. Damn. It's freaky out. To think about that right now is just like super eerie. Yeah, just a bit. Do you know what I mean? Oh, by the way, everyone, we're, we're camping here. <laughs> yeah, this, this is us camping. Do you know what I mean? Like it's normal. So we're actually uh, we're actually parallel to the first UFO sighting where it landed, the land, it landed over there. To the right. right. And then basically on the right in a minute in this this clearing. On the left, you mean? No, on the right. Was it? Yeah, on the right. Here. No, keep going. Oh, someone's house. I'm sat living there. <laughs> 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 on the right here. Here. Yeah, in this opening there. You're broken. Get in the field. Yeah. This is where it happened, bro. This is where the aliens got out. <laughs> right here. Three of them, by the way. Yeah. And you can check this on Google Maps. If you go to Rendlesham Forest on Google Maps, it, there's actually an icon that says... Second UFO se with three entities. Temporally closed. <laughs> Temporally closed. <laughs> oh, oh, God. What have I got myself into? Mate. I have no idea. The tennis lot. I'm only tennis lot. Do you know what the worst thing is about this right now? The worst thing is about this right now. We've got oh. no signal. Yeah. And there's no... What's that noise? It's like a plane. Mate, it sounds like a UFO to me, is not it? The UFOs don't make noise, apparently. Yeah. So something else we've got to watch out for. But, by the way, guys, we are, as you already know, camping here overnight. Uh, not only is there a lot of stuff going on with UFOs, um, aliens, but it's also meant to be super haunted. So we have all the paranormal equipment you could ever need. Um, numerous cameras, uh, CCTV camera, full spectrum, night vision, trap camera, um, and main camera. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're going full force on this one. Um, I also have some, uh, let's call them, uh, UFO beacons. Got some, uh, super high powered lasers we're going to play with as well. Um, it's going to be an interesting one. Well, now let's just figure out where to go. Do we do we go across the field or do we go in the woods? You know what's really weird, right? I keep tripping myself out now. I don't know if my eyes are just adjusting, but it's like a, my brain's convincing myself I'm seeing like yellow yellow lights in the forest, which oh. is really weird. Right, okay, so before we head into Rendlesham Forest tonight, I'm going to ring my guy, Daniel. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Fucking hell. Right. Right. Retake, you ready? Yeah, yeah. Take two. Right, okay, so before we head into Rendlesham Forest tonight, I'm going to get my guy from America, Daniel. He's like major UFO expert. He's like top of the game right now. Okay. He knows his stuff. He's like he's like David Attenborough slash David Icke and all the rest. I don't know. Well, he's called Daniel, so I trust him. Yeah. <laughs> I have to sign up to my only Dan's account. Only Dan's, that's right. But um, he knows his stuff. He literally does all this UFO stuff all the okay. time. He knows how to contact them and do all this crazy stuff. I've seen his videos and no joke, he's capturing UAPs all, right, all okay. the time. So let's get him on the phone and see what he says. Go on, ring him. Hello? Yo, Daniel. What's up, dude? How's it going, bro? It's going good, man. What's going on with you? Yeah, so right now we are at Rendlesham Forest and I just want to know some, some tips, some advice, do's and don'ts, and possibly how to connect with you know, UFOs and aliens and stuff. Well, man, honestly, I don't, I don't, personally, I don't think they're aliens, but that's a whole other topic we can discuss some other time. I don't think they're aliens. I think they're interdimensional. I honestly think that, uh, 
that what people are seeing are physical manifestations of uh, beings that are intercessors between uh, basically the, the consciousness of the universe or God Whoa. and man. You're, you're potentially opening a really big door, and I don't think it's one that you can close. It's not something like um, going to a haunted location and dealing with uh, potential spirit energy. You know, it's it's nothing like that at all, man. It's completely different. This is like opening the door to angels and demons directly. Whoa. Huh? Uh, and obviously, you know a lot about the the Rendlesham uh, incident as well with all the UFOs and U.S. Um, Air Force Base that's nearby and the RAF base. Uh, oh, yeah, the uh, men that went out to investigate it. Yeah, one of them actually touched it. Oh, yeah, and it had writing on it, too, yeah. which if you look at the pictures that they drew of the writing. And you go back and you get into the stuff like Dr. John D, who was like Queen Elizabeth's uh, court advisor back in the 1500s. He was like one of the world's most prominent magicians. I had one of the largest libraries in Europe, if not the largest library in Europe at that time. He actually got into like studying like uh, angels and, and he wanted to learn how to contact angels directly. And so he created this whole system of magic called Enochian magic. And if you go back and look at the drawings that some of the military men drew of the writing that was on the craft, I swear, man, it looks an awful lot like the Enochian script that the angels passed down to John Dee and his uh, his uh, cohort, Edward Kelly, back in the day. While we unpack, I'm going to let you listen to Colonel Holt's audio tape from the night in question. Some very large tree right over. We just found the first night bird we've seen. We're about 150 or 200 yards from the site. Everything else is just deathly calm. There is no doubt about it. There's some type of strange flashing red light ahead. There's yellow. I saw a yellow tinge in it, too. Weird. It, it, it appears that you may be moving a little bit this way. It's, it's brighter than it has been. Yellow. It's coming this way. It is definitely coming this way. Pieces of it are shooting off. There is no doubt about it. This is weird. Okay guys, we are mounted up. We've got the trolley that Thomas Head did get us a while back when we were doing the haunted camping all the time. Bear in mind, this is episode one of the Halloween season haunted mystery camping and we are at Rendleton Forest now I will say if you want to help out I do get a lot of messages asking if they can donate and you know what I'll always say I do not like taking donations but if you do want to help with the videos uh, I have a wish list on Amazon and it's full of stuff that help us with the videos from yeah like this what Thomas Head got us what Thomas Head got us or we, we know uh, people have bought us tents and sleeping bags and hammocks and uh, wood for the fire, red bulls, gift vouchers, you know, all this stuff, batteries, all this stuff really does help make the videos and, you know, it does cost a bit of money, you know, but um, I really, really appreciate it and whoever does buy stuff, we will open it up at the beginning of an episode, you already know. You ready? I'm ready, man. Alright, get the trusty old wagon. It's just kind of like eerie right now, it's like... Can we imagine seeing the lights in the distance? Look, you can still see the MOD fence in there. Yeah. Imagine just seeing like you know, an orange glow. Oh, man. And then pursuing it. Don. What? Didn't one guy touch it? Yeah. So he touched it, and apparently he was like, he was uh, writing like binary code, you know, like yeah. ones and zeros. Yeah. Weird that. Strange, but he, he also wrote down uh, letters that he saw on the, on the ship itself, symbols. Yeah. He got that close to it. That's so weird. The it? crazy thing about it really is, it was like foot soldiers chasing it. And if it was just the foot soldiers, people would be like, yeah, okay. But it's the fact a colonel chased this thing through the forest too. Yeah. It's like, it's mad. It's very credible. It's starting to get a little bit more dense.
you have to get to like a crossroads it looks like when we do a riot. Huh? Let me check the phone to see what I'm going to have. See if we're going in the right direction still. <laughs> Make sure, innit? I hope so. Don't want to end up no crash site. Okay, so it looks like we've got a right turning coming up, but that takes us right next to the second UFO. Okay. Or we can go straight on and then do another right, which should link us up to the main UFO landing spot. We'll go to the main because we could always take a walk to the secondary later. Yeah. And we've unpacked. Let's do it. A bit of a crossroad bit. Um, so we came from that way. This way takes us to the secondary crash landing, but I think we can get to the, the first one, the uh, first landing, and this way takes us towards the first landing. Carl's going to work out the fastest route, and that's the route we're going to take. One thing I will say, we are in the middle of nowhere. There is no one about. There's just me. Me and Carl. Um, I've been to a lot of forests and I've done a lot of things, but I'll tell you what, weirdly, at the moment, I'm probably the most nervous here right now, just because we're dealing with apparently things that we definitely shouldn't be dealing with. Um, yeah, so I can't describe the feeling I'm feeling right now, apart from you probably shouldn't do this. Like, Grot came out and got us both, that's it. We'd never be found again, no one would ever know. He's ignoring me now. He's yeah, not thinking about it. I'm, <laughs> waiting, I'm waiting for that, either little skinny grey alien to come out. Right, don't let's talk it. about that, let's go. Come on, I ain't talking about that shit. <laughs> okay, now. Scary enough as it is. No, no, bro, this is not the right one. <gasps> this is not the one yet. We need, need to go that way. And you talked about walking the other way. It was triple the, the, the length. stay at this it is just one massive vast forest now and we're, we're going down these like oh there you go you can see it better now these pathways 15 minutes feels like an eternity besides some of these trees though, i didn't even realize the trees are that big here it's really freaky isn't it yeah it's just like an echo i was talking at the same time and so was you so I don't know where it came from. It could have been an animal. I heard an echo. Yeah. It sounds like... Low. No, it sounds like a... Almost like a... A duck. But ducks don't echo. I'd feel a lot more better if you had the bright light on. Yeah, it'll soon die, that's the problem. I think if you have panel lights... We, we've got loads of panel lights, we just need that for travelling through here. Yeah, but I'm thinking if anything crank happens and there's like high energy, it'll just drain the battery and we've got to get out of here and pitch botanist, which I'm not doing. No, I've got power banks. Yeah, but it'll drain that as well, man. Yeah, we've never had that. I think about man, we're doing with aliens right now. This is it. This is the UFO, boys. Damn. All this way. <sighs> no, apparently this is what it was described as. This is exactly what it was. It's got the markings here. Classified. The Rendlesham Forest UFO Trail classified. Don't disturb the aliens. You have walked the trail, you have read the story, and considered the events of those dark winter nights in 1980. Did you see anything mysterious? Do you believe? Look at that. Guessing that's how they're portraying it. Well, don't forget, he got close enough to see it, and I'm pretty sure the way he described it is the symbols, but it like they were dripping metal. So, so I guess this is like the metal drips. It's so weird, and it's think like, why would you walk up to and touch it though? Well, why wouldn't you? I would. 
You'd be the first person, well, potentially the first person on the planet to touch UFO. I don't know, man, I'm not going for that whole thing. But apparently around here... Oh, God. <laughs> okay, well, we're camping next to the UFO. This is the landing site. In 1980, where the US uh, troops at a nearby base chased a UFO through the forest. And it wasn't just normal troops, there was a colonel there too. They chased it through till it came to a stop right here. One of them got close enough to touch it. And then it shot, propelled up into the sky and disappeared. Now there was levels of radiation left behind. I unfortunately had broken my guider counter coming back from Fukushima. Um, otherwise I'd have brought it to test the radiation levels here. Maybe we'll do a return and do it again. But right now, you already know, let's get the tent up. tent set up, got the fire on, we took some pictures and now it's time to make some food. But I thought what better way to kickstart the Haunted Camping series again with a good old classic. Leave your comments down below what you reckon. We'll, we'll wait, we'll wait 10 seconds Carl. Yeah. 10 seconds, everyone put your comments. What do you think we're gonna make? Carl, what, what do you... I know what we're gonna make. I know you know, but what would you like if you could have anything Anything for the first camping meal, what would it be? Uh, Donna kebab. Donna kebab, that's not a bad shot, actually. <laughs> kind of feeling that right now, in some naan bread with cheese and yeah. chilli sauce. Garlic and garlic mayo, both yeah. mixed together. No, we're not. We're going to have baked potatoes. That's what we're having. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have we're gonna some potatoes. <laughs> okay, right, let's, let's uh, get the masterclass done. You ready? Oh, by the way, we've also got bacon butties for the morning, too. Some lettuce there. Uh, yeah, there's bacon and stuff in there. So, uh, that's all for in the morning. Okay, we got tin foil. We got black cracked pepper, rock salt, beans, uh, Carl's beans and sausage, some mashed up butter. It's uh, split open a little bit. Cathedral City. Some really good olive oil. Extra virgin. And some Tesco's tatters. Let's go. We don't get bad in this voice out here in the UFO forest making some scrumptious jack potatoes, beans and cheese. <laughs> yeah, man, game. Never know, man. E.T. might come down and just eat us up right now. Come on. Well, the Grey just came down and was like... Oh, you, oh, you, Meaning, I'd be really annoyed. My virgin oil. I'd be really annoyed that I didn't get a chance to eat these first. Depends what time he arrived. Normally I would... Uh, Roast garlic and put some clove in there too, but you know, beggars can't be choosers and all that. <laughs> well, I can hear the oil already. They're uh, they're on the fire now. And beautiful potatoes will be ready soon. Bro, this is like seriously in weird right now. Right, so his his phone just spoke out loud when it was in his pocket. He's 
picked it up and what's that? Mate, dead comms just loaded in my pocket, right? Right. On its own. I've not touched the phone, right? Yeah. And the first word that's come through is saying, their chip. Their chip? Their chip. As in like the chippy? As in like their chip. Chip? Chip is in like a, like like a, a module chip. chip or... Yeah, yeah. So you know what's funny about that? A lot of people who claim to get abducted end up with like little chips in them. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. And they actually found a lot of things in people that are admitting radio waves. Don't know if you know any of that. This is weird as hell, man. Warmer. Well, they are getting warmer, the potatoes. Their chip, yeah. So Dan was literally just saying then, like, when people get abducted, they claim, you know, that they have chips and, like, chips yeah, to make the radio waves and things like that. Do you not remember that case, that famous one where she said she got abducted and she went for x-ray scans? Yeah. it was. And they found some, like, weird piece of metal in it and yeah. engravings in it and they think it was, like, linked to, like... A chart of the skies. Don't know, but them little piece of metal are found in quite a lot of people, and when they pull them out, they are admitting a radio signal, and that's what they believe. Like they can track, they kind of track the the abductees. You just don't know. I mean, what the hell has just happened? It's a bit weird, fucking weird, bro. I'm sat next to a UFO. I just said dirt chip. in Rendleton Forest, and now it's saying that they're chipped. I'm gonna keep that rolling and see what happens. They are not far off done. We've got the beans on now too. So um, I'm going to tell you a spooky story when we start eating this. And uh, Carl will be telling a spooky story on his channel. There will be differences in both videos. So go over and check Carl's. He's going to do his own paranormal. And I will be doing my own paranormal. Um, so yeah, see both episodes to get the full picture. And don't forget they are both filmed completely different. Anyway, we, me and Carl have a completely different style of filming. So both videos are completely different. Okay, so before we have the food, um, last year I filmed a video inside um, a graveyard that wasn't a graveyard, turned out to be an old um, TV, zombie apocalypse uh, TV set, and I told a, a spooky story by the fire, and I thought, you know what, time for another spooky story. Uh, this one doesn't involve me, but told uh, Carl about this and the car on the way here and he was freaking out so about four maybe six or seven years ago now uh, one, one of I don't know them directly it was my my friend's friend um, I believe he went to Amsterdam and she was backpacking okay and as she was backpacking around Amsterdam came to her last day she ended up <coughs> In, uh, in the normal place most people end up on the last day in the red light district. Um, just in a normal bar, just minding her own business, having a couple of drinks. She got chatting to some guy there, okay? So she was chatting along and, uh, and they ended up hitting it off. They were, they were kissing and stuff in, in this bar. And that's as far as it went. It wasn't, wasn't too bad. Um, she, she thought it was a little bit creepy how he kept trying to get her back to the hotel room, but again, classic guy. <laughs> so what happened was, uh, she went home to her hotel. She went back to her hotel alone. And then um, that would have been the end of the story. Only it wasn't. Um, she woke up in the morning and she had like a weird spot, some stuff around her mouth, rash. Um, she was due to go home that day, so she did. Flew back to the UK. Um, and went to see a doctor and the doctor examined her and turned out well he, he believed it to be some kind of STI right so they were like they couldn't quite pin it down so he sent her to a dermatologist uh, who obviously inspected her skin and uh, to her surprise the police walked in police walked into the, to the hospital and uh, they said, you know, we, we've got a, a couple of questions, you know, you're not in trouble, we, we need to ask this question. Um, are, are you, have you got a partner at the moment? Uh, she said no. And uh, they asked her what her occupation was. Does, does she have any work in the hospital or, um, as weird as it sounds, in a funeral parlour? And she said no, not at all. Um, only because this specific... Um, and it wasn't even really like a, a rash, it was more of parasites on her face. Um, can only really be contracted from bestiality 
or being a, a necrophiliac. Okay, so for those who don't know, that means uh, intercourse with a dead person. So she had to retrace her steps, tell the police day by day what had happened. And she told them the story about this guy she met in this in this thing. And luckily, she got a business card off him, right? So they were able to collaborate with um, the Netherlands police. They tracked this guy down who was still in Amsterdam, uh, raided his hotel room, and he had committed two murders. One body was still inside the hotel room, and he was having intercourse with that body every night and he was looking for a more of a fresh person so he was trying to bring that girl back to his hotel room but because she didn't he didn't succeed she came back and contracted this rash around the mouth that you only get from being with a dead person so you can imagine the horror and this is a true story. This is a this is non. I, I hope this is not a lie. This is a true story. And uh, I remember when I heard this story, um, I I not long watched Hostel, right? So that kind of solidified the fact that I would never go to Amsterdam. <laughs> but I have been since then. But I'm just saying, like I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. I'm gonna avoid um, avoid Amsterdam. But yeah, true story. Kind of a. Oh, a bone shaking one, isn't it? Imagine that. What did you do, Carl? He started getting off with some girl and turns out she was having sex with her corpses. I'd be heartbroken. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, he's is, is like... So when I, Googled, when I Googled all this, the story came up. Um, in fact, there's quite a few similar stories to that, but there's one in particular where a girl had had intercourse with a guy who had been having intercourse with dead people and uh, she started getting severe cramps and went to the doctors and she had maggots inside her. Uh, maggots. So, yeah, you know, guys, hope you had your tea already. Um, <laughs> hopefully I've not ruined it for you. I, I, I did actually, you know what? Reminder down, please put a disclaimer at the beginning of this story. Um, but yeah, let's try and potatoes. Oh, we got it done. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh not even kidding you. It's going to be so good. I'm so glad we got two each, bro. It's so good. Bang in there. Yeah. What it sound like? Huh? Yeah, hey, bro. I didn't hear it because I was talking. There's no train tracks nearby, is there? There's no train tracks, no. nothing out there. But you mean it sounded like like yeah, when like, it, the, like a train, like yeah. you know the, the sound yeah. of a train, but it sounded more like smoother. Honestly, bro, that was a really strange sound. That's my touch sound. I mean, do you hear it again? Yeah, what is that? What's that, bro? Sounds all night, man. No. What time, what, what time is it? It is four, 20 to 4. 20 to, oh, 20 to 
There's a, could be deers, a lot of deers. Great. Alright. RIP call. Oh, man, it's so freaky out here. We've walked, we've walked away from camp, away from the UFO, into the woodland just to see if we can do uh, not too much. I'm not going to do a crazy amount because I wanted to focus it on the sky. So uh, I wanted to just try a little bit of paranormal. I'm, I'm only bringing out two pieces of equipment. Cat ball and the Alice box. Uh, you have uh, probably been aware of our presence. Uh, we've been here all night. We've uh, been to your mock-up spaceship. Uh, if you are a ghost, an alien, a demon, an angel, whatever you are, if you can hear me, you can use this to talk to us. You can manipulate what the words uh, that come out of it. So weird. Isn't it? And uh, there's a ball on the floor. You can touch that, and it will go off and let me know that you are here. Fucking hell, shit. Drain the battery. It's glitching. It's not drained. Bro, the brand new battery, I just put them in. Yes, it's drained it. No way. Yeah, but have you noticed like your phone and stuff like that have been absolutely draining fast? Seen that? What the hell? That's so weird. But have you not noticed your camera batteries are dropping out really quick as well? No, no there was only one battery that, that zapped there quick. And that, there was only one battery that zapped really quick and that was it. None of the, the other ones have been fine. It's weird, man. That one's been, been fine. The, the main camera, the, one of the batteries zapped really quick and that was it. It's strange because when I was doing my stuff before, man, my camera batteries just kind of like... Well, drained off quite quick. Think about it. When they, when they drain that, they're not going to just drain a collective like everything in the area. They're, it's going to be specific things, isn't it? Man, I feel like we've been watched right now. But bro, I feel it constantly. Shit, I just hated with that. Ever since we've been here, I just feel like it's like a, a, you're not very welcome here because it's not your space. This is our space, and you need to be invited. Yeah. That's how I feel. I feel like you could probably come here, but at night it's a different time. Yeah. It's a different. What's up, bro? Oh, fucking hell. I think it was your shack, bro, when you moved your arm just then. It looked like someone was peeking out from that tree over there. Do it now. Do it. No. Was it? I think it was your arm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's your arm, bro. I don't wanna freak out and run. No, but I do know what you're saying. It's like, we ain't welcome, bro. That's what it feels like. Oh, yeah, look at that. No, it's working. Dude, what the yeah. hell? Have you, uh, have you messed around with this, with this device? Do you just not want to communicate at all? It's like a, do you see that? Over yeah, what there? was that? What was that, bro? I don't fucking know. That was a flash of light. Yeah, it was a flash of light, man. Fucking glad you saw that. Hello? I hate you with that. Yeah. Glitched, again. Glitched again. That was a flash of light over there, though, bro. Do you get that chat on camera? I don't know, I've just seen it like in the corner of my eye. The fuck was that? No idea, bro. Fuck's sake, now I'm not happy. Yeah, no, that was a bit strange, man. Bro, there's nothing, there's no one around here for miles. So we do need to take into it's account like of like a, natural sounds, but it's like a weird dog though. I know. There's no dogs in this woods. Did did it? Can you hear something? Like someone's getting closer. Why is something in the forest? Yeah, 
It's a bit annoying because we've got that plane going up above our heads right now. But it's like something going through the forest. Mate, what's going on? Kind of feel mm. unsafe, innit? I don't think we do now, but let's just stand. Um Let's, we've made our presence known, we've been here for a long time. Let's uh, get the cameras, point them in the sky, and let's get the laser pen out. Yeah. See if we can see if we can make contact so that way, or, or make something happen. Right, okay. I mean, when we're, bear in mind guys, we are in the UFO hotspot of the UK. This is where it all went down. And now we're gonna go and take super high powered lasers, point them into the sky, including flashlights, and see if we can do anything. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm not saying it is. You know, I'm I'm on the fence, probably like most of you guys, but it's worth a try. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this camera, as you can see, the the frame rate is very low, but it helps us see the sky. Um, we are going to run some experiments. I do have this high, super high powered laser. He's uh, flashing torches at the sky. <laughs> uh, let's uh, see what happens. We're currently still at the UFO here in Rendlesham Forest, right at the uh, the landing site where the US soldiers chased this uh, through the forest. And uh, yeah, 43 years later, we're now here. Do this. Right, you ready? Yeah, I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna aim for those, those up there. You ready? Okay. Oh, yeah, I can see it. I feel like it's a bad idea. I really do. Try what was the sequence? So we have to do. He, he said, What did he say works best again? Was it three? It was nine, seven. Yeah, but it was in a certain sequence in a triangle formation. Okay, so let's just try. Let's try three first and see what happens. So I'll start from the, from the right now. Oh, bro, look at that. Dude, no, do you know what, what do you see? Oh, I see that. What is that? I don't know. Can you see that? Don't shine your light at it. What is that? Dude, I have no idea right now. I can actually see that with my own eyes. Mate, I just appeared out of nowhere. I'm locked on it. I am locked on it. It's, it's, it's still moving. That's not a plane either. Dude, that just came out of nowhere. I'm still tracking it. It's gonna be on the trees now. Alright, let's try let's try some more man, see what happens. I've just gone deaf in one ear. Yeah, what, mm. like Timothy's? Yeah. It's a bit weird, isn't it? That's so strange, wasn't it? Yeah, it did come out of nowhere. I'm hoping the, uh, the sky cam picked it up. Let's do some spiral stuff, is it ready? Okay. 
There's some up there moving fast now. It's way off in the distance, so it's dead small. Put your laser on it, man. I know. Oh, yeah, I can see it. Bro, I can see it. Yeah, it's it's over that way. It's it's moving to the left, isn't it? It's like the. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget, some of them could be satellites, or... Yeah, true. But it's weird how we're doing when we're just appearing now. Let's try the top formation. Just keep trying a bit more, see what happens, man. Let me uh, try my spa my uh, proper spiral one. Let me find the piece. Because, uh, as we know, if uh, if we go off like what we know with crop circles, they love uh, geometric shapes and uh, sequences like that. So this might attract. That first one was crazy. Yeah, it was, right? I mean, it was like kind of straight away. As soon as it did, it was like, it's not happened. Let's try again, man. Let's do, let's, let's do more numbers this time. Fire. Jesus Christ, yeah, man. man. Scared me twice. Hey, I probably shit myself when I thought someone was going through the in woods. No. Oh, man. Keep keeping an eye out of the woods. Interesting start. Well, to be honest, I didn't think we'd get anything. So that first one that popped out of nowhere, I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing what the uh, the sky cams caught. Because yeah, yeah. if they saw it like fade into existence or whatever, yeah. that'll be a, a fun one to see. Well, that's it. Whoa, 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 what was that? Whoa, I saw that then. What was that? I don't know. Oh my God, did you just see that? that? Yeah. I saw it with my own eyes. Oh, wait. The, oh, that's a plane there. Oh. we got to be careful with that one. That's a plane, definitely. <laughs> like, you can see the difference between yeah, a plane. Look at that. that. That's a plane. Look at it flashing. So whatever, whatever that was that we caught before was yeah. definitely not a plane. It was just... It might have been a satellite, but... To be honest, it, it, I think it looked too big for to be a satellite. Yeah, man. But you, you can clearly see that, even when I'm zoomed out. Clearly see that's just a plane. Hey, do you know what, man? 
but that wasn't that. It was something else that shot across the sky. I think it might have been a shooting star, but... Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I thought he was getting abducted then, you know. <laughs> I thought it was game sort of match. Well, I reckon we take a break from that and do, try it again in about half an hour. Yeah. Just keep trying it, yeah. Got to be careful with planes, though, because they'll, they'll report it. Because they'll see the laser. Yeah, that's it. Probably seen that laser. Yeah, like probably. Five minutes ago. Yeah, I probably did. <laughs> Let's just switch this up. Let's just have a walk around. Let's just do some, do some bits, some spirit box maybe. Just see if we get any stuff. EVPs because it's deadly silent out here. Yeah. Let's just see what we get, man. If we get something that's interlinking with the alien stuff, kind of like what we did come before, it's a dead ship, which I thought was really bizarre, man. That was weird. It was really odd, wasn't it? Yeah. So maybe we just we just do a bit of that stuff and just see what happens. I'm gonna take a quick recap. I'm gonna take a quick look at that. Just yeah. I'm curious. and he's coming over <laughs> oh well Carl what you there I said him. you did oh, I just before I start recording you did oh, what was I you said we didn't get abducted the sun is coming up um, we kind of woke up in a shock um, <laughs> Carl jolted next to me and was like who's that I was like, Whoa. I was like, what the hell? I was, I was going to say, what's outside? And then I remember a UFO. <laughs> uh, right, guys, we're going to get up uh, and start cleaning up this. Make sure no one knows we are over here. You already know how it is. We are just finishing up, we're going to clear up the fire now, uh, packed it all away, uh, got all the rubbish into a bag. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. I've got to I've got to say, out of all the forests that we've done, in terms of paranormal and stuff, I've got to say I probably was the most frightened last night, just because we're in this circle, the central part, in the middle of the woodland, that is said to be slightly radiated due to a craft landing here in 1980 when the US soldiers chased it through here. This is a mock-up of that craft. And I mean, you know, uh, you've got to be pretty serious to, to make this. Um, and, and knowing that there was just nothing but darkness around us and the idea of maybe shining your light into the forest and seeing like a gray alien hiding behind a tree genuinely messes with your head when you're here, when you're just with one, one other person. Uh, how, how did you find it, Carl? Well, it was a little bit weird, especially uh, when I was doing a bit of the investigation. And, you know, I asked for, I requested for something to happen, and then all of a sudden it was just this weird sound that just happened. It was like a, uh, the only way I can describe it is like, uh, like a Bigfoot had a big branch and banged it against another tree. Yeah. It was like a bong. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was weird. That, was, that got me frightened. But, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Uh, camping next to the UFO in Rendlesham Forest, the most active hotspot for UFO activity 
in the UK. We caught some anomalies in the sky too. Could have been a satellite, but it was pretty damn cool that we was able to observe that and track it. Uh, anyway, let's head back to the car, you already know. Kind of see, this is just the entrance to here, but how dense it is. It's about 7 a.m. now, sun is pretty much completely up over there. Right, let's bounce. Don't forget guys, check out the link below for Screen Fest. Friday the 13th of October, come and meet me and the crew. Come and go on all the rides. You know, you've seen the videos, you've seen the posts. Now it's time you come. Already know it's a long way out, but we've seen this, all these trees have been pushed over in the same direction. Coincidence, probably. But I thought I'd show you anyway. Kind of weird. Well, this is gonna be. What? Oh shit! That's a weird area. This. How many? A few. Yeah, it's weird this lot. Why are they all pushed over in this direction? Uh -huh. a bit weird, though, isn't it? Yeah, a little. This is the second UFO that you would have just been here. Yeah, so the second UFO landed here two days later. Yeah. And and everything's kind of like pushed in this direction weirdly. Like like it might have come in at this angle. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying it did, but it's just weird how everything's pushed this way. Right, let's try and get this through. Got it. It's not too heavy. It's not too bad because you've used up all the wood. While he gets uh, fallen out of his shoe. Look at this tree here as well, how it's been tilted to the left and the roots have been exposed. Um, and there's this exact same over there as well. There's one tree over there that's done the same thing. Can you explain, anyone explain to me why that happens? I'm guessing there's a logical explanation as to why a tree would do that. Um, obviously, because we're in UFO territory, it's, I've got to ask questions. I've got to ask these things. I've got to be like, you know, well, what's, what's the reason for that? Why is everything being pushed over? Yeah, kind of cool. Yeah, look, this tree is the same. I can push it over, and so is this one. Almost looks like a den of some sort. But yeah, this tree uh, was once pushed over as well. It's like it's been there for a long, long time. But super interesting. Super interested to know why. Right, let's get back to the car. Well, that is the sound of car getting mauled. So we noticed our sleeping bags were missing. Yep, it is. Carl's getting bitten. Got a very nervous laugh then. And now that fucker's bringing him over here. Watch this now. I'm gonna get bit of some shit for laughing at Carl. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> You can imagine Carl running around the corner. He had no idea there was a. He's gone to find our sleeping bags and he's run around the corner and come face to face with those three. Oh, I wish I could have seen that. You get to meet some new friends. 
Yeah, mate. And then that dog attack. <laughs> Like three dogs. Yeah, I know they came here. Tag team by three dogs, man. Uh, did you not know they were there? What? Did you like run around the corner and they were just no, there? I mean, they were already barking at me by the time we even got to the bend anyway. <laughs> I was like, I can't be asked with this. It's like 7 a.m. I saw you like pressed up against the log over there. No, what's this? I stopped, didn't I? I stopped and then I was just like, what should I do? <laughs> Clearly, the guy had no control of his dog, so I was I like, turn his dog off. Trying to get it to like stop and shit. And he's just being a knob, mate. Okay, no. I know, innit? <laughs> Well guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this is Rendlesham Forest. I, I want to say the most haunted forest in, in the UK, but it's not. I don't think it is. I just think it's the most mysterious forest in the UK. For some reason, UFOs and extraterrestrial life is I don't know, it's drawn to this place for some reason. Um, I felt uneasy last night. Yeah, that's true. Um, but yeah, I did enjoy it. Um, don't forget, Friday the 13th of October, Screenfest is going ahead again. If you don't know what Screenfest is, where have you been for the past three years? Roll the clip. Right, so we're going where to we the corn maze! You are going to the corn maze! Oh, well, we're to my old line, now we're out. Who's that? Where's he gone? Right, Josh, is that alright? Yeah, I thought that was really fun because in the beginning it was pitch black and trying to find your way through is actually a challenge. Is that your cup, so I'm good. Alright, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. What do you mean that? That's good, yeah. Come on. Come on. There you go, like Scream Fest, you get to meet all the crew, we get to go on attractions together, there's fur ground rides, there's food, there's games, there's paintball, and there's new attractions, there's actually seven attractions now. Seven horror mazes for you guys to enjoy. Actually there's six, but there's there's a bonus one, that it's like the seventh one, but it's like a pay extra one, and I don't give too much away, but let's just say that it's a tractor paintball ride, a zombie apocalypse one, right, that's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you've been before, yeah, you already know the score. Grab your tickets. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel and uh, click the bell, always notify. And if you really want to step up your game and really help us out, consider becoming a channel member. You get exclusive badges in the name and special emojis to use in the live chats and the premieres and the comments in general. And everyone then knows you're a part of Team Fighters. You are supporting them. Talk about exploring fighters like it's a different person, not myself, but you, you know what I'm on about. Uh, Carl, what did you think about last night? Successful mission. Yeah, you had fun? Yeah. I had fun, but there's something weird about this place, without a doubt. Yeah. It's not the most haunted place, but it, there's something mysterious Exactly. Like, I couldn't rest. That's there's exactly. Really uneasy and it's mysterious about this place. Whether it's because we know that some extraterrestrial came from the skies, came yeah. down, and it's it's eyewitnessed on two accounts in, in the same area. Yeah, that's true. I just noticed those power, power lines running through the forest as well. Yeah. Maybe that might have some kind of effect. But it, Carl said it right, I couldn't quite figure out the word I was looking for, I came up with mysterious, but it, it's not the most haunted forest, but there is something really ominous about the place. Something, you can feel like something has happened there once upon a time. Um, but yeah, right now we are packing up, and uh, I'll tell you why this, this video definitely deserves a like, is we're going straight to a hotel, we're going to sleep for a couple of hours, charge up our equipment, and we're going to go and film another location. I am returning to the Screaming Woods, that's right, I'm going back to Durham Woods. Um, Pluckley Village is meant to be the most haunted village in the UK. The villagers there hate it, 
they put up signs saying ghosts are not real you're wasting your time turn away um it's almost like village of the damned um there is numerous ghost reports uh numerous ghost signs in the village but the screaming woods obviously when we were there we heard screaming coming from the woods for about four hours in the night yeah maybe it was the local nut jobs just going in there screaming i think that's what it exactly was i think it's that that notorious people just go in there and scream for no reason but we're going back to find out more i've got more and better equipment than i did last time so let's go and check it out and you already know i'm going to check out uh, dark hearts tv's video different to mine and his channel in general me and me and carl have been friends now for six years i'm gonna say it's been about yeah. oh no it was the beginning of 2018 so it's coming so up. It's ticking up six it's years, coming, man. Times are ticking. God damn. <laughs> God damn. When we were, we were young fellows back then, we used to do a lot of underground and, you know, we could pull up manhole covers and not our, our backs. Yeah, yeah. We could go on all night and not get tired. And now look at us. So, you know I mean, I, just did a, I, did, I did a jog rack for a sleeping bag and pulled my back. <laughs> <laughs> nah, mate. What's going on? Uh, Exploring my Zimmer friends coming soon. <laughs> Happy Halloween!